Amen. Well, guys, we're just going to jump right into the Word of God, if that's okay with you. Um, we've been in this series called Guard. Someone say Guard. And we've, we've been learning that we got to guard ourselves from things and, and all sorts of stuff, right? We learned first week that we've got to guard our, our heart, our heart. We've learned that we have to guard ourselves against sexual sin. We've got to guard our marriage, right? We've got to guard ourselves against sin. Last week, we talked about, Pastor talked about how we must guard the anointing on our life, right? Well, this week, let's, let's go ahead. We're going to jump into scripture. Let's find out what we're going to guard today. Does that sound good to you? Come on, we're going to look at this. We're going to be hanging out here today in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 14. Let's throw that up on the screen there. Here we go. It says this, through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, carefully guard the precious, what? Truth. Guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. Guard the truth. Guard the truth. Come on, how many of you know that we need to guard the truth? Where there is a truth, there is a false. And there's a lot of false going on in our world right now. We gotta guard the truth. Guard the precious truth. Now, now we gotta understand that the Apostle Paul, he is writing this letter to Timothy, and it's important to note, this is the last letter that Paul is writing, okay? He's writing this, so this must mean it's very important, right? This is the last letter before he is going, and he's going to get beheaded in Rome, all right? So this is important, and he says this to Timothy. He says, guard the precious Truth. What, what is Paul referring to as the precious truth? Anyone? No one. The word. The word. Guard the word. Now, now know this. is They didn't have this whole book back then. It was being written, literally. This letter is here in the word of God. It was being written and it was this precious truth. It was the, the truth of the gospel. And Paul, he's telling Timothy, guard God's word. Guard the word of God, which is truth. Someone say truth. Come on, how many of you know that this word, the word of God, it is the truth? It is the truth. Listen, this book right here, it is not just some old dusty history book. No, this is God's word. Let me break it down for you. This right here is God's words. It's his words, guys. It's his words. It's the truth. The Old Testament, the New Testament, they are both verbally breathed out by the living God. This word right here, it is alive. The word of God. The word of God, it is the truth. Psalm 138 verse 2, it says this. It says, for you have magnified your word above all your name. You, God, you have magnified your word above your name. God, he has such high estimation of his word that he has magnified it above his name, above his character. Yes. Yes. You guys are not getting this this morning. God is saying, this is saying right here that God, he lifts up his word above his name. That's incredible to me. He lifts his word up above his name. Why? Because the word of God is the main source. It's, it's God's way of sharing his truth with us. 
This is how it's communicated with us. And I don't know about you, but if God, if he magnifies his word above his holy name, I'm going to follow his word. I'm going to follow what his word says. It's alive. It's active. It's sharp. Everything in this book, it is truth. It is not flawed. Nothing in it is flawed. It is the truth. It is the truth. And we have to guard it. Someone say, guard the truth. Now understand this, that God's word, God's word right here, it's the language of his spirit. Can we teach a little bit today? This, this right here. It is the language of the Spirit of God. So that means when you are reading it, when you're reading it, when you're pondering it, when you're meditating on the principles in this book, you are allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And as a result, you can keep your flesh under control. It's the, it's the Word of God. Now, but, but when you dwell on sinful thoughts and sinful pleasures, you are operating in the enemy's language and you are letting him dictate you. Guys, this, this right here, it's truth. God's word, did you know this? God's word is a weapon. This is a weapon right here. I, I mean, you could use it as a, but no. Guys, God's word, it's the sword of the spirit. This right here, it's the sword of the spirit. It's the only weapon that is, sh is sharp enough to cut you loose from sin. It cuts us loose from sin. No wonder the devil doesn't want us to know this. Because it cuts us loose from sin, right? We got to guard it. We got to guard it. So the devil, if, if the devil doesn't want you to know the word of God, which is a weapon, which is the sword of the spirit, he comes in, what does he do? He comes in and he tries to twist the word, right? He tries to come in, he tries to twist the word of God. And can I tell you, so many of us have fallen for this trap. Many of us, we come in and we, we, we've, we've picked and we've poked. We've twisted the scriptures so it would fit our narrative. We've picked and we've poked. So we, we've twisted it so it, it would make us feel good. So that maybe it would excuse us from our sin of how we're living. Psalm 119, verse 105, it says this. It says, your word is a lamp to guide my feet and it is a light for my path. Uh, th think of that right now. Think of the word of God, as it's, it's a lamp and you're in the dark. The word of God, is, is, if it's supposed to be a lamp, to guide my feet and a light for my path, but I keep on picking and choosing of what I think is true, and I'm throwing out, oh, that's offensive. Oh, no, 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 that, that, that's not for today. No, no, that, that, that means I can't keep doing what I'm doing. Th think about it right now. You're walking in the dark. If this is supposed to be a lamp that guides my feet and a light unto my path, and we're just picking and picking and picking, we are picking the light that is in his word and we're walking in darkness. We've got to guard this word, which is the truth. Guys, we're wrong. The word of God is right. Everything in this book, it is correct, it is right. Not just some of it, all of it. All of it. His word is for today. His truth 
is for today, and it is the truth, and we have to guard it. Amen? I've got to guard it. I want to be a guarder of truth, don't you? Yeah. But we're going to go, and we're going to dive into the truth today, which is the Word of God. This is the truth. And we're going to talk about those who guard the truth, garters of truth, okay? Can we do this today? Let's, we're gonna hang out in this scripture that we read earlier, but let's say this all together in one voice, okay? 2 Timothy 1.14, it's on the screen there. Let's read it together. It says this, through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, carefully guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. Garters of truth don't hide the truth, right? Garters of truth do not hide the truth. I don't know about you, but when I think of guarding something, I think of like, like this, right? Like I'm guarding it, I'm, I'm covering it, I'm, I'm protecting it. Listen, guarding the truth does not mean to keep it a secret. Okay, it doesn't mean to keep it a secret. First of all, in this text, who's writing this scripture? Paul, Paul, Paul is writing this scripture. Where was Paul when he was writing this scripture? Prison, why was Paul in prison? He was preaching the truth. He was not hiding the truth. Garters of truth don't hide the truth. Look at this. This is Paul talking. 2 Timothy 1 verse 11. He said, God chose me to be a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of this good news. The truth. The truth. That is why I am suffering here in prison but I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed of it, for I know the one in whom I trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him, Jesus Christ, until the day of his return. Garters of truth don't hide the truth. They don't hide the truth. They don't keep it a secret. Have you guys ever been to like a football game or something, some, some crazy awesome sporting event and, and it's just like electric in that place? Anyone know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it is just, it's loud. People are going crazy. People are like all painted up in their team's colors. Like it's crazy, right? Who knows what I'm talking about? Anyone? Yeah, it's, it is just awesome. And you know the, the LED screen there, it says, get loud and people are like ah, they're right they're going crazy and then what does the screen say again get louder and they're like ah, like they're going nuts it's like it's so loud it's deafening anyone been a part of something like that before it is so just ear piercing loud my cousin he is now the starting middle linebacker for the tennessee volunteers and they beat alabama last night which can you imagine how loud it was in that place Loud, 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 just deafening, loud. Guys, this is exactly what's happening in our world. It's getting louder and louder and louder. Perversion is getting louder and loud. Just when we thought that it was loud, it is getting louder and louder and louder. Corruption is getting louder. The voice that is against God in all things biblical is loud. And where's the church? Where's the church? Oh, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't... We, we, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's the 10 a.m., so we're going to. 
We're streaming right now. We don't, want to, we don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. We don't want to say anything controversial. We, we don't, we're just going to be quiet. We're going to mind our own business. Listen, garters of truth, it's time that we get vocal. It's time that we get loud. Can I tell you, if hell can get loud, we can get louder. We can get louder. Come on, where are the unashamed Christians at? Where are those who are not intimidated by hell? Where are the garters of truth? It's loud. It's loud. We gotta be loud for Jesus. Loud for the truth. The truth, friends. Because can I tell you what? Hell is on assignment to silence the voice of God. Hell is on assignment to silence the voice of the Holy Spirit, to silence the voice of the Word of God. Hell wants to silence the truth. Wants to silence the truth. From marriage between a man and a woman? Hell wants to silence... From, from, from everything about life, from the very beginning, a baby in, in the womb, to the end of it, hell, hell wants to silence holiness. Hell wants to silence separate life. Hell wants to silence our command to stand with Israel. Yeah. Friends, we... Something big is coming up in November. Are we going to be silent? We've got to stand for truth. Amen. Truth in the word of God. The truth of the word of God. See, the world is so loud about sin, but for some reason, Christians are so quiet about Jesus. So quiet about Jesus. Why aren't we loud about Jesus? Why aren't we loud about Jesus? There are some people here in this room that you go to work every single day, and those people that you work with, they don't even know that you're a believer. How? Why? The truth is, if people don't know that you're a believer, you probably are not. We can't be silent for Jesus. They know we're Ohio State fans, though. Yeah. <laughs> really? I don't think they got that. If people don't know that we're Christians, even just by the way we live our lives, separate holy living, then what in the world are we doing? What are we doing? Friends, God's word, that, that scripture, it says, guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. God's word has been entrusted to us so that we can share the good news with others, so that we can share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Christ follower, truth garter, garter of truth. Don't hide the truth. Amen? Amen. We can't just hide the truth. We can't be silent about the truth, guys. We have to stand up for truth. We've got to stand up for truth. 2 Timothy 1.14, let's look at this again. It says, through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, carefully guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. That has been entrusted to you. That phrase right there, it breaks down to a Greek word and it's called paratheke. Someone say that. 
paratheke. Yeah. And it means this. It means to be used of the correct knowledge and pure doctrine of the gospel. To be held firmly and faithfully. To be conscientiously delivered unto others. It, notice those words right there. It says correct knowledge and pure doctrine. Pure doctrine of the gospel. Second Timothy chapter 4 says this. It says that there's a time that is coming... When people will no longer listen to the sound, uh, listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They're going to follow their own desires and they will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. We, it, this is happening all over the place. Can I tell you right now, if a so-called minister is preaching and teaching that something is okay when it clearly says in God's word that it isn't okay, they are not ministers of the gospel, they are ministers of the devil. I don't know what Bible they are reading, but it's not this one. It's not this one. And we see this all the time in, in liberal churches and university campuses. You know, nowadays, we see preachers that they just want to be all sweet and nice with this sugar cookie message and they're preaching about the five ways that you can relax on your vacation. What's that? What is that? Like what, what, what happened? What, what happened? Paul was writing this in prison for preaching the good news, the truth of Jesus. What happened? We've gotten soft. What, what, what is going on? Because man, if, if you read in the book of Acts, the book of Acts tells us that when the preacher preached, the people, they were cut to the heart. They were cut to the heart and, and people were like, what do we do? What do we do? Preachers, they preach with conviction. They preach the truth of God. What, what do we do? Repent and be saved. Repent of your sins. Repent of wrongdoing. Repent of unforgiveness, hatred, racism, lust. Repent of that homosexual lifestyle. Repent of adultery, drunkenness, lying, stealing, murdering, gossip. Repent. It's the truth of the word of God, friends. We can't say that, that, that the gospel is all just love. We can't. Actually, it is, it is love because it tells you the truth. The truth of repentance, of the, 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 the truth, the gospel of repentance that says turn away. Turn away from that stuff. Turn away and turn to Jesus. Don't live that way anymore. Because if you do, you're not going to spend eternity with Jesus. We will preach the truth of the word of God here at LFC. We will. Because we want... We want to spend eternity... In eternity with everyone in heaven. Now we got churches that condone sin. Churches, preachers, they're saying, oh, it's okay. 
Keep living how you're living. Can I tell you right now, be very careful. Beware of this kind of a preacher, this kind of church, this kind of teaching because it's leading people straight to hell. Garters of truth, stand up for truth. Stand up for truth. And you know, we, we've got to stop making excuses for things, guys. We've got to stop making excuses. If you're willing to continually make excuses for something that is clearly not right and you keep arguing for something that is, that is not of God clearly, you've been deceived. You've been deceived. And too many Christians, guys, too many Christians will argue and they'll make excuses. They will go all the way down to the depths trying to justify what they are doing even though it's wrong. And what we watch and what we consume and what we read and what we play on the video game and what, why? Why? Why do we do it? Because we love the world more than we love the word. We love the sin more than we love Jesus. Come on, where are the garters of truth at? Where are the garters of truth? It's time that we stand up for truth. We stand up against the enemy. Oh, well, who am I? How? How can I possibly do that? Who, who am I to do such a thing? You, you know where you can get your confidence from? The truth. The word of God. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God, it stands forever. Guys, let your Bible, let it be everything to you. Treasure it, read it continually, read it, read it, read it again and again and again. Turn its pages by day and by night and let its narratives mingle with your dreams. Let its precepts color your lives. Let its promises cheer your darkness. Let its divine illumination make your life glad. Guys, the Bible, it's a letter from our Father. The Bible, it's a picture of our very best friend, most faithful friend, the Bible. It's a certificate of our adoption into the family of God. The Bible, it's a declaration of our liberty, our freedom from slavery. The Bible, it is the description of our heavenly inheritance. The Bible it's the evidence of our nobility, for we were made kings and priests by God. The Bible, it is the instruction manual for wise and blessed living. The Bible, it is a telescope where we see that heavenly city that is our destination. The Bible, it is truth. It is truth. And we've got to guard the truth. Someone say, guard the truth. Let's keep going. Let's read that again. That scripture we're in, it says, through the power of the Holy Spirit who lives within us, carefully guard the precious truth that has been entrusted to you. That has been entrusted to you. We learned that Greek word earlier, paratheke, it not only means sound doctrine of the gospel, correct knowledge, but it also means this. It means a deposit. It means a trust or a thing consigned to one's faithful keeping. Someone say faithful keeping. Faithful keeping. Garters of truth live it. Garters of truth, they live it. They live and they love God's word. Honestly, guys, how can you love God if you don't love his word? You can't. Guarders of truth live it. Those who guard the truth, they don't just stand up for truth. 
They, they, they don't just speak up for truth. They don't just spit out scripture and quote it all the time. No, they live it. They live it. They love it. Like, it makes sense that they stand for truth because their life is proof of the truth. They are a living proof. There's fruit. There's fruit there. They are faithful in keeping. They're faithful behind closed doors. They obey the word of God. They are what that Greek word says, faithful in keeping. See, keeping something, it's more than just holding on to it, right? It's guarding it. It's using it. And I just want to take a moment real quick. Every one of you that maybe you feel insignificant or you think that you can have no contribution to make to God in his kingdom, I want to tell you right now, your faithfulness matters. Your faithfulness matters. Your commitment matters matters. Your consistency matters. Because listen, churches, they are built on saints of God who are faithful in keeping. I'm looking at them by the hundreds right now. And they may never stand in this pulpit, but I thank God for our seniors and our elders. They have lived the life. They are a testimony in the face of hell that there are some people who have guarded the truth and they have outlasted the storm. They have been loud. They have stood firm. They have not quit. They might not be able to shout like they used to. They might not be able to dance like they used to. Or, or stand during the whole worship service, but they're here and they're faithful and they have kept the truth that was entrusted to them. I thank God for you. Can we give it up for our seniors, for our saints right now? I thank God for you. Faithful in keeping. Faithful in keeping. Does, does your life, does it reflect a faithful relationship with God? Does it? I, and I'm not, I'm not just talking about the highlights that are posted on social media, I, right? I, the things that you do in your life, in public and in private, does it bring glory and honor to Jesus? Jesus said this, he said to the Jews who believed in him, he said, if you abide in my word, if you live, you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Free. The truth shall make you free. Free, freedom, freedom. See, the enemy, the deceiver wants you to think that life is just gonna be boring now, that I'm gonna follow Jesus. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this. I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't even have a life, right? I can't. But Jesus said, Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you, what? Free. 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 He, here's the thing about freedom, guys. With freedom, you get to choose. With freedom, you get to choose. Do you want to be a slave to sin or a prisoner of Christ? Because when you're a slave, you do not have a choice. You're going to relapse again. You're going to get drunk again. You will wake up not knowing that person's right next to you again. You will look at porn again. You're a slave. 
You're bound. You're in chains. There's no choice. But when you are a captive to Jesus, when you're living in freedom in Jesus, you have the grace to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Listen, I I don't know about you, but I'd rather be a captive to Jesus than a slave to sin. The truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. Freedom. Guys, we've got to guard the truth. We've got to guard this, the truth. And if we're going to do that, if we're going to be guarders of truth, we can't keep it a secret. We can't hide it. We can't. We, 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 we have to stand up for it. We've got to live it. We've got to abide in his word, what Jesus said. We've got to live it. But before we can even do that, we've got to submit ourselves to Jesus. Jesus said this. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me.